Hello guys, Chris here and welcome back to another video. In this one, my friends, we're going to be testing the GeForce RTX 4060 Ti 8GB model. <sighs> I was really hoping for like 12 or at least 10 gigabytes of VRAM on this thing, but uh, they decided to give it eight. And then later on in July, they will have a 16 gigabyte variant of the 4060 Ti. It will be exactly the same GPU with the same specs, but with double the VRAM and also $100 more. Speaking of dollars, this will cost you 399 US dollars MSRP, which is the same price as as the 3060 Ti released. Well, kind of, like it, when it released, it was like 900 bucks or something, but still. <laughs> the MSRP is the same as the last generation, so at least it didn't go up. And the 3060 Ti was a very good card for the price back in 2020 when it released. But it's been two and a half years, guys, and what did they improve on this thing? Well, compared to the 3060 Ti, it's 15% faster. Now, this is clearly not the generational leap that we were all expecting, I think. Like, 15% faster than the 3060 Ti is basically 3070 performance. And don't get me wrong, 3070 is still a very fast GPU. And it's good that you can get it for like 100 bucks less these days while consuming much less power and while having the DLSS 3 frame generation, AV1 encoding, the 40 series uh, shenanigans. But I just expected better, guys. <sighs> Let's talk about specs now. Like the other 40 series cards, this is based on the Ada Lovelace architecture. It has 4,352 CUDA cores, 8 or 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, 128 tensor cores, 34 ray tracing cores, and a TDP of 160 watts. And that's where this thing becomes pretty interesting and a little bit impressive at the same time power efficiency. In reality, while gaming, I've only seen it go up to like 140 watts, and most of the time I was getting around 120 watts of power use. Like, that is just crazy low. So at least there's a good improvement in efficiency compared to last gen. And well, that's it for the intro. Without further ado, let's play some games on this thing and saturate those 8 gigabytes of VRAM, shall we? <laughs> Let's start with the VRAM hog, The Last of Us Part 1. We're playing at 1080p resolution without DLSS and the Ultra Settings preset, and you can see that that VRAM utilization is already over 8 gigabytes. Uh, that could be a little bit of an issue, but since the developers fixed the game, it's not really too bad. It doesn't stutter whatsoever. It's extremely smooth, in fact, that frame time now that they fixed the game is really nice. But the thing is, it still drops a lot of FPS in areas like these. It dropped into the 60s already, it will drop into the 50s even in just a little bit when we get to the uh, last part of my benchmark run. <laughs> Look at that, 64 FPS right there. And that's a bit concerning. I was expecting a little bit better coming from a $400 GPU in 2023. Over here is where it drops, 58, but not by much. Uh, you know what? I, I gotta tell you something. The first time that I tried this game on the, the 4060 Ti, at the same settings, exact same settings, I was seeing about like five less FPS. It dropped into the 50s way more often. I don't know what happened since then. It was like four or five days ago. Now it's running a little bit smoother and I can't really notice any slowdowns whatsoever because uh, it's not dropping from 60. All right, let's kill these guys over here. Come on. Oh boy, I'm just wasting my bullets. Oh, no, no, do not flank me, boys. Do not flank me. There we go. Come on, there it is. I am very sorry for my horrible gameplay right now. I just, I can't really aim in this game for some reason. It feels really bad. Probably because it was made for consoles and I'm playing with mouse and keyboard. So bottom line is the developers have fixed the game. It's running pretty well on the 4060 Ti, even at 1080p Ultra. But the thing is, I expected more. Next, we got Forza Horizon 5 looking 
absolutely gorgeous at the 1080p native resolution using the highest settings possible. All right, I first tried it on Ultra and even at 4K it was achieving 60 plus on Ultra settings, which was very, very good. But on Extreme, it actually runs out of VRAM as well. Look at that. It's at 8.1 gigabytes of usage right now. I didn't even know it could go that high to 8.1. <laughs> that is absolutely insane. Now, the thing is, it is not stuttering whatsoever. It is a buttery smooth experience and it looks just amazing. Now, an interesting thing that I did not expect <laughs> was the game is not showing a VRAM warning message. Sometimes when you run out of VRAM in this one, it starts showing a, a warning on the top of the screen. It hasn't done that yet, and I don't know why. <laughs> Here we are, getting down into the high 80s, low 90s in the city area. Super intensive part, by the way. It's not really dropping by too much. I actually thought it would drop more around here. I think I was expecting a little bit more performance here coming from maxed out settings with a 4060 Ti, but it is a buttery smooth experience. The game looks fantastic like this again. And on ultra settings, if you were wondering, it gets 160 FPS on average, so a major bump in performance. Oh, there we go. So after like eight minutes or so, it actually displays a VRAM warning message. Doesn't stutter though, so that's fine. Next is Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p using the Ultra Settings preset here. I just disabled the FSR as well as Motion Blur, and that's it. We're not using ray tracing yet, and we're using high crowd density. And using these settings, the game consistently stays above 60 frames per second. VRAM is completely under control at 6 gigabytes, but you know, Cyberpunk is a three year old game almost at this point, two and a half year old game, um, so there's that. And in this very intensive roundabout area, it is getting all right performance. Again, guys, it's, it's, if you bump it up to like 1440p, it won't really be stable anymore. You also have DLSS, which looks great in this game. Where's Bob? Bob? He, he ran away already! Goddamn bastard, where is he? But yeah, if you're one of those people who will pair a card like this with a 1080p monitor, which I feel is the most adequate resolution these days for an 8GB GPU, well, you can rest assured that at native resolution, if you don't use ray tracing, it's gonna be completely flawless of an experience. Let's stop it there though, and let's try it with some ray tracing, shall we? Let's do ray tracing ultra, not gonna test overdrive in this video, stay tuned in for another video with that. Uh, and these are the settings right here now. I'll also disable DLSS, okay, just to test it out at native res. By the way, at native res, all of the GPUs get wrecked with ray tracing, <laughs> aside from like a 4090. This is capable of getting like 40s. And wow, those reflections are looking way better, damn. <laughs> it makes a little bit of a difference. I still wouldn't really enable it because it already looks amazing on Ultra. Um, but uh, this time around, I was expecting a little bit slower performance with ray tracing enabled. That's not bad whatsoever. Now let's enable DLSS super resolution on quality, which makes the game look great still. The quality of the reflections, however, is much lower than at native resolution, and you can tell that, especially like on the car right there. Uh, but it still makes the game look very good with quality DLSS here at 1080p, especially on a native 1080p monitor, and it gets around the same FPS as native 1080p with ultra settings. So that's quite nice to see, at least you can get that ray tracing experience if you want uh, with decent FPS and uh, the VRAM is still not maxed out either. But it's really close at 7.5 gigabytes and what happens if we enable frame generation at the same time? I'll set this to quality right here. This is a very VRAM intensive setting by the way. I'm curious if we're gonna run out of VRAM and start stuttering all over the place. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That was a major stutter there, guys. Damn. 
Maybe that's what's happening. Is it running out of VRAM because of frame generation and ray tracing at the same time? Like, that defeats the whole purpose of these 40 series GPUs with DLSS3 technology and frame generation. Maybe it was just a one off. All right, let's give it the benefit of the doubt. VRAM usage went down now. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you like to live on the edge, guys? Because that's what you're doing if you buy an 8GB GPU <laughs> these days, I guess. If you want to play at maximum settings, of course, and ray tracing and frame generation all at once. All right, 7.8 gigabytes again. It's, it's right on the edge. It's right on the edge, but it's still... It's not stuttering anymore. That was probably just a one-off at the beginning, guys. Now we're playing Call of Duty Warzone 2 at 1080p using no DLSS and the Ultra Settings preset. The only thing I changed from the preset was the depth of field. I turned it off because otherwise, instead of Call of Duty Warzone 2, it would be a blur of duty. Yes. Anyways, let's start counting our FPS. This is one of the most intensive areas in the entire game because it has some water around us. And so far, it's getting really good FPS. 120s, 130s. It is a high refresh rate experience at the ultra settings and 1080p resolution, which is very good. It's what you want from a card like this, for sure. The thing is, when you do the most intensive thing in this game and uh, you act like a dolphin, uh, the FPS tend to drop by quite a bit. I saw like 87 FPS in my previous run through and now it dropped into the lower 90s. Why am I being tracked? I don't understand. Oh, damn it. Also, those 1% lows are very low, but that's just because of the little variations that we see in the frame time graph. Those have plagued this game since forever, since the release of it. Um, they're a lot less noticeable now. I would say that above 100 frames per second, it isn't even noticeable that it's micro stuttering, but they're there and they will lower your 1% lows. Also, if you require more FPS and you want the game look a little bit more clean, you know, with the low settings, because to my eyes, it actually looks cleaner on low. <laughs> uh, so basically, if you are looking for that competitive experience, you can expect way higher FPS, of course, up into the 160s and stuff like that. And you're probably going to be CPU bound at that point anyway. So at 1080p, the card can do a, a great job here at ultra settings or low settings. It's, it's always going to be a very, very smooth experience indeed. Next up, we got Apex Legends at 1080p using the maximum settings aside from this one which is kind of broken and we are seeing a hundred plus fps looking at the entire map from above so that means that down there it's gonna be even better getting 180s and 200s down here the game is looking fantastic i really like what they did with the colors this time around it's not all orange like it was the last time that i played this map so it's a lovely experience basically super high refresh rate Super stable. This is what I like to see <laughs> coming from a $400 GPU. Another interesting thing that I'm noticing is that the insane textures in this game say that you require 8 gigabytes of VRAM to run them and it's only using 5.1 gigs or 5.2 almost. So uh, yeah, clearly the VRAM is plenty for Apex Legends. No worries. It's also an older game at this point and like The Last of Us and stuff like that, of course. There's another one here. All right, wait a second. Come on. Nice, one down. There he is. Take out the shotgun. No, I missed. I missed again. We're gonna die. We're gonna... He's also missing a lot. So he sucks just as much as I do. Oh, we did something very good here in Apex Legends. I wasn't expecting that. Usually I suck. <laughs> you know what? Let's die, the both of us, okay? I threw my ultimate. <laughs> That's the worst case scenario, basically, with a ton of explosions around us. Dropping into the 130s, 140s, it's still super high refresh rate, guys. Oh, hello there. How's it going? What the heck are you doing? Oh my god, I actually missed that. Oh, damn it. Now it's the good old GTA 5. And in this one, I selected the 4K resolution with my custom settings. So basically everything is maxed out aside from grass quality and post effects, as well as the advanced settings right here. 
And if all you want is to play older AAA titles, the 4060 Ti is actually capable of doing so, even at 4K resolution. That's to be expected, because the 3060 Ti could also handle this at 4K easily, as did the, four, the 3070. If you want to connect your PC to your TV or something like that and play at 4K resolution, this game looks really good still, even in 2023, 10 years after its first release. And it plays amazingly on a potato even, so no wonder the 4060 Ti does a great job. Now where it drops the most is around bushy areas like this one, but it didn't really drop as much as I thought it would. I thought it would get like 60 something FPS here. Hello Jack, how's it going buddy? Always happy to see you my friend. Oh yes. 5.5 gigabytes of VRAM usage there at 4K, that's totally under control obviously. 63 minimum, so it's gonna be at 60 plus 100% of the time. Goodbye, Bob! No drops whatsoever. If it didn't drop there in the bushy areas, it will never drop from 60. Next is another game from Rockstar Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p using the maximum preset right here. It's not set to complete maximum settings, but it's mostly on ultra, some things on high and a few things on medium. And let me tell you guys, this is a buttery smooth experience with this GPU in Red Dead Redemption 2. Granted, this game is also a little bit old at this point. It's released in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, in 2019 on PC, but it still looks really, really good. I wish the textures were a little bit better looking, even though they are already on Ultra. Uh, they could look a bit better for sure, but overall it's a masterpiece of a game in terms of story, visuals, and it runs like butter here on the RTX 4060 Ti, which again is what you would expect from a 2023 mid-range GPU at 400 bucks. And even at 1440p this game won't really utilize that much more VRAM and it will be completely playable and smooth on this GPU as well. Actually, you know what? Why not try it out? <laughs> Since it's running so well at 1080p, I want to check it out at 1440. Here we go, 2560 by 1440 using the exact same maximum preset, not max settings again. Now this area isn't really the most intensive one, but it is a pretty good estimate of what to expect most of the time in this game. In Saint Denis, it actually gets slightly uh, more FPS than here, and by the water is where it drops the most, 66 there minimum. 67, yeah, this is really great at 1440p, you know, I wouldn't really have a problem playing RDR2 on a 4060 Ti at this res. It feels amazing. Now it's Battlefield 2042 at 1080p using the ultra settings and no ray tracing or DLSS, and in this game... If the FPS weren't this high, I would actually utilize some DLSS because it looks really good in Battlefield 2042. Oh boy, no, no, they're already inside. Hello there, hello there, hello there. There's one outside there. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Come on, get outside. Gonna go through here. There's one here, okay, there we go. Another one there, I missed. There's another one here, nice. Yo! Nice couple of kills there. I can't shoot that one. Let's go. Come on. No. Ooh, around here it gets 90s. That's very interesting. I thought it was going to be like 120-ish average most of the time and it wouldn't fluctuate too much. Seems like in an open field with a ton of uh, little details, I guess, it gets really intensive. 80s, 70s there. All right, maybe we're going to use some DLSS after all in just a little bit. Oh boy, resupply. No, 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 come on, what are you doing? What are you doing? Damn. No. Ah. Come on, no. <laughs> oh, so many, so many, so many. Oh my God. <laughs> nice triple kill there. All right, let's stand over here. It's getting 105 FPS and I will enable the LSS. So we want that on balanced. We went from 105 to 119, 120 frames. Okay, it's a little bit smoother now and uh, it looks 
almost the same, maybe slightly softer, but it got rid of some weirdness from the TAA, so it arguably looks a little bit better as well. And this is the Ultra Settings preset. On high settings, it runs a lot better than Ultra in this one, and it looks the same, basically, <laughs> as is the case with a ton of games, you know? Oh, come on. How did that all miss there? How did that all miss? Let's go. Okay, the pistol is so good for some reason. I am. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Got another one. Good, 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 good. All right, guys. That's probably too much battlefield already in this video. So I gotta cut it short here. But it is a lovely experience indeed. No. Oh. Damn it. <laughs> okay, now it's Spider-Man Remastered. We're playing this at the 1080p resolution again, TAA and no DLSS at the moment, using the very high settings with ray tracing enabled. And uh, this is very intensive. It's actually way more CPU. In oh my God, that's a lot of stuff. Oh, we're running out of VRAM. <laughs> okay, see what the issue is with eight gigabytes. In some games, the experience is not gonna be great. That's why I think this should have come out at least with like 10 gigabytes, you know, at least. I would love to have seen like 12 on the 4060 Ti and only one model of it, no, 8 and 16, because 16 is way too much in my opinion, for a card in this tier. Anyways, NVIDIA loves to push the frame generation stuff on these 40 series GPUs, so let's turn that on along with the LSS on quality and uh, see how it goes. It seems like it is a little bit better, actually, in terms of stability. Uh, I'm a little bit impressed, actually, guys. <laughs> like, I, I, it was a much worse experience at native resolution, and supposedly frame generation, again, it uses a lot more VRAM as well. Uh, but that's not the case, you can play it. It doesn't look as good as it did previously, but it's pretty close. You can see a little bit of a halo effect around Spider-Man, but now you can play with ray tracing enabled and pretty high FPS with the occasional little stutter here and there. Now, of course, the best way to play this game would probably be without any DLSS to make things a little bit sharper at 1080p and without ray tracing, so we don't saturate those 8 gigs of VRAM. And yep, without the ray tracing, it only utilizes around 6 gigabytes of VRAM. It's actually lower than that right now, but it's still going up. And it gets some insane FPS, guys. Next up is the Stuttering Mess Stutter Knight. We're playing this one at the 1080p resolution DirectX 12 using the Epic Settings preset. I am gonna enable some TAA first, okay, with 100% resolution scale. Hardware ray tracing is turned on, and uh, let's go and play it. Oh my god, I just noticed, look at that RAM usage, what the hell is that? This is absolute insanity. VRAM isn't maxed out, but the RAM? Like, what the hell? Uh, all right, y you need more than 16, apparently. Uh, it's getting around 60 frames per second, which, I mean, considering we got ray tracing enabled and it's at native resolution at the moment, is not half bad. You know, it also looks really impressive with the epic settings this game. But if you want a good 60 plus FPS experience, you definitely need to use some DLSS. You can set it to quality and in this game, it looks basically like native resolution. It really works with Fortnite's heart style. It won't really get rid of the stuttering issues though. That's a game feature at this point, you know, but it never drops from 60 FPS from now on guys. Yeah, it's uh, hovering around 80 to 90 most of the time in this little town area. Now, of course, if you really want to be competitive at this game, you will probably play using like performance mode and the lowest settings possible. And then you'll have like 300 frames per second easily. Um, but uh, if you are looking for a better visual fidelity experience, I would probably end up using these settings. Around bushy areas with a lot of vegetation, it drops down into the lower 70s at times. Oh yeah, I gotta check it out inside of a bush as well. Yeah, 69 right there was the minimum so far. If it wasn't for the stuttering in this one, uh, yeah, I would say it was a flawless experience. Right, 
So if you want to play esports titles, uh, you're good to go at 1080p with a card like this. We're getting 300 FPS here in Overwatch 2 at 1080p using the ultra settings. All right, we could go extreme and get like 100 less FPS, but you know, it looks the same. And uh, you probably will want to max out 240 Hertz, for example, here. Of course, I uh, completely suck at this game. I do not need to tell you this every single time. Uh, Overwatch is just not my type of game. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna get wrecked here. Come on, Pharaoh, fight them bastards. Throw your ultimate or whatever. No, you don't want to, okay. Never mind, it's okay. It's gonna be fine. She did it. She killed two. I helped. Oh no, now I got this ball of doom. I don't like him. I really do not like to play with this guy. I don't know what to do. Oh boy. Oh, there we go. One kill. Come on. No, 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 no. That was so fast. I can't, I can't just, uh, we, we already lost, right? Time for a magical experience. Hogwarts Legacy at 1080p DLAA using none of these settings, no frame generation or DLSS or anything, and the recommended high settings preset. With this on Ultra for some reason. Well, it's recommended. Let's go. <laughs> and well, I'm not sure how many of you expected this, but with a 5800 X3D, at least in the Hogsmeade area, which is this town right here, it is CPU bound. This area is insanely CPU bound. I just, ah, they haven't fixed it. They never, they will never fix this, guys. Now let's get to a more GPU bound area, okay? Down here, things are usually way more GPU bound. 99% right there. Dropping down into the 80s. Still a buttery smooth experience though, especially now that we don't see a CPU bottleneck. Uh, but if you want to ease out those stutters, guys, and achieve a bit smoother of an experience, I suggest you to lock the FPS using Rivet Tuner or NVIDIA Control Panel. Do not use the built-in FPS cap into this game because that doesn't work very well. It still stutters a lot like that. I was actually thinking it would do a bit worse of a job here in uh, Hogwarts Legacy. All right, guys, we're playing Elden Ring now. We're dying in Elden Ring. That's what's happening. We're using the 1080p resolution, high quality ray tracing, as well as the maximum settings without motion blur. No, 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 no. Uh, you can see that GPU usage is not maxed out because the game is capped to 60 frames per second. But let's see it over here. This is like really, really GPU intensive with all of the vegetation. It might be GPU bound. Oh yes, it is. It is starting to drop from 60 quite a bit. Huh. <laughs> I actually thought the 4060 Ti would be capable of achieving a lot higher FPS than 50s. Well, not a lot, but 60 flat all of the time, even with the use of ray tracing on high. But it isn't. Now, what if we disable ray tracing and keep the maximum settings? It looks very similar anyways. Okay, now it gets 60 FPS pretty much everywhere with 70 to 80% GPU usage. And that means that it will only consume around like 70 to 90 watts of power because of that FPS cap. That's really efficient. Once again, it's 1080p maximum settings without RT basically. Now, the last thing to do is hit this bastard in the butt. Come over here, boy. Oh, am I dying? No, Roach is dying. No, you cannot kill Roach, boy. All right, that's it. Run into the fire. And uh, we're dead. No, we're not dead yet, but it doesn't drop FPS, so it's a flawless experience in the Elden Ring. Ah, it's a good day in Dying Light 2, although we're seeing a few drops from 60 FPS, so look at that. The lighting is insane. So we're currently playing at 1080p with no upscaling and the high quality ray tracing preset. And yes, it does drop from 60 FPS at native res, but we gotta remember that ray tracing is super intensive, right? For example, in Cyberpunk, it was a much worse experience. This one runs much better with ray tracing enabled. It doesn't look as impressive either, but still. Let's enable some DLSS at the same time, and this will definitely save the little 4060 Ti at 1080p. No need to use frame generation. It already gets near 100 frames per second now, and it looks very good still. 
Actually, I think it might look slightly sharper in native resolution now, because the game is just a little soft um, at native res. So yeah, I would have zero problems playing like this. I'd probably end up using these exact same settings myself. VRM usage is still going up though. And I have seen, uh, yeah, seven gigabytes right there. Down here, it jumps up to seven gigabytes of usage. See, this is the thing. Even if out of the today's games, only like three or four of them actually do run out of VRAM and start stuttering because of it on an 8 gigabyte card, uh, because they're unoptimized, in future games, that will be the norm, probably. Uh, I'm guessing here, but seeing how things are going, in future games, it, they're, they're just going to be more unoptimized and use way more VRAM, so yeah. Now we're playing God of War at 1080p, no DLSS, using the Ultra Settings preset, and it says that it requires 6.2 gigabytes of VRAM, so uh, we're, it's well under control. Start counting our FPS right now, and oh, oh boy, no, this is not, oh, no, how do I, how do I point, oh, there we go, yes, I totally forgot about the controls of this game. <laughs> <laughs> right, so there's going to be a cutscene that's extremely intensive in this little benchmark run of mine. It's already dropping into the... Just shut up! Uh, the 60s. Not sure if you noticed, but it did drop... Oh, 57 there! Come on! 4060 Ti dropping from 60 FPS in, in God of War. You do have DLSS support though, so if you want 60 plus, and you will want 60 plus, and I also want 60 plus, so I'm gonna enable that, uh, you'll need to use quality DLSS, but I mean, I just was expecting a little bit better, guys. Now, DLSS actually does look quite a lot better now than a few months ago, so uh, I would probably just end up using it. it. It's good for 60 plus FPS after all, you know. And this is the cutscene that I was telling you about. Usually things drop tremendously right here, but I've seen that the 40 series GPUs don't really drop too much. 30 series drop a lot here in this particular scene. Now, don't get me wrong, this is still strong performance, obviously. It's getting 60 plus all of the time and it looks great, but I, I just was expecting better. It's completely playable, it's very smooth indeed, doesn't stutter whatsoever. But again, I think for a, a successor of the 3060 Ti, it should have been faster. Far Cry 6 is up next, we're playing at 1080p using the Ultra settings, SMAA, Ray tracing is enabled right there. Here we go, start counting those FPS, and this right here is the built-in benchmark of the game. I'm not really playing it myself, because otherwise I can only test a single area in the game, and this is more complete in my opinion. Now, it's buttery smooth, <laughs> basically, here. Even with the ray tracing or DXR enabled, it has no problems running it at native 1080p resolution. But there is a setting that I did not utilize, the HD textures. First, I actually enabled it. It ran out of VRAM right about in this part of the benchmark, or the, the last part, you know, and it started stuttering like hell. But the thing is, it still looks very good without the HD textures enabled, and you actually do require an 11 GB GPU or higher to run HD textures in this game, so they're really, really VRAM intensive. Also from Ubisoft, we got Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 1080p, 100% resolution scale, using the ultra-high settings preset. Let's do this. Started counting the FPS, and uh, wow, those... Those are actually really sweet frames per second in this one. Frame times are also super stable. It's only consuming 110 watts of power. Like, what is that? <laughs> the 3050 consumes more power than this one at 130 watts. It's crazy efficient, dude. And it is finally conclusion time, my friends. I'll have Valorant, which is the bonus game of the day, running while I talk about the 4060 Ti here. Should you buy one for 400 bucks? I think it's a tough sell with those eight gigabytes of memory. Performance-wise, I mean, it, it's a tough sell in performance as well, honestly. We're getting 15% more performance, raw performance without the DLSS stuff, um, compared to what we had two and a half years ago. That's, uh, uh, that's not what I expected. I, I really thought with the massive performance jump of the 4090 over the 3090 Ti that the mid-range this year would be insane. Turns out it's 15% faster. 
I mean, yes, there are some things that are way better here on the 4060 Ti than they were on the 3060 Ti or 3070. Power consumption is much lower, and that's important, of course. Temperatures are amazing <laughs> with this little Founders Edition cooler. It's very pretty as well. I love that. <laughs> that doesn't matter. And again, as I mentioned in the intro, you get the frame generation DLSS3 AV1 encoder, um, which is of course great and only available on the 40 series. But I think they should have had more VRAM. I'm not gonna recommend it with eight gigabytes in 2023. Maybe if the price drops.